you can keep the word and be carnal, carnal still, yeah, because it's not completely dealt with yet. We see, we see Peter, we see Paul talking about carnal Christians in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. He says, you're still carnal. You're not spiritual men yet. You guys know where that scripture's at? Anybody want to type it in? Participation here? Spiritual, spiritual man. Yeah. Okay, natural man. That's what I want. But it's the same thing as carnal. Natural man. Natural man. This is the problem. You see, the, spirit, the, the natural man is trying to receive the word. Okay, here's what we want to talk about right here. This is the problem. This is, this is the issue with what Tim's saying about Jesus proclaiming that his disciples kept his word, but they still went and sinned. When you first receive the word of God, you're not a spiritual man yet. You're becoming one. This is the new creature right here on the right, the spiritual man. Let's go read it. 1 Corinthians 3, 3. Yeah, but you got to read, you got to read the previous chapter to get to this point. You see, you're still carnal. On the right, you'll see, you'll see Paul talking to these Christians who are still carnal. Ye are yet carnal, for you're still acting this way, sinning. Have they received the word? Yeah. Have they been baptized? Yeah, they're in the church here. He's, he's addressing the church. The people in the church. Of course they've, been all be they've all been baptized. Of course they believe in the blood, burial, death, and burial, and third day resurrection of Jesus. They know that. But they are still natural. Now, why am I using the word natural? Because that's what, that's what Paul talks about in the previous chapter. Let's go back and look at it. The previous chapter, you really got to go all the way up to verse 12, I think, or further. God has revealed these mysteries to us by the Spirit. Now we receive not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit of God, which means we know some things that the world does not know. And even in the churches, as ignorant, carnal, natural men still, people that are learning to come into the kingdom, they, the ignorance, they still think like men. And we still act like men. And we still have lots of sin that we have in our lives. And you're not just spiritually perfect because the seed, the incorruptible seed is in you. That incorruptible seed is why I want to stop sinning. Brothers and sisters, in my opinion, in my opinion, if you don't want to stop sinning, you don't have God's spirit in you. Now, Tim Conway may teach that, hey, you can't really stop. But he wants to stop sinning, and that's the difference between him and some of the other cult leaders that I've seen on YouTube. You, you can want to stop, and you hate your sin, even though you have this tormented uh, idea that you can't really do it. It bothers you. You're quenched, and you have that, that agony in you, right? But anybody that does not want to stop sinning isn't of the Spirit of God, okay? So here we have... Now, we have received the Spirit of God. Now, here he talks about the natural man. What have we been talking about? We've been talking about the born-again process, how to receive the Spirit by keeping the teachings of Jesus, and by that, we become new creatures. We become new creatures how? By keeping obedience to the teachings of Jesus. For example, show mercy, and God will show you mercy. You become, you become a merciful person because of the teaching, because of the instruction. You're changing because of what you heard. And His Spirit is moving inside us. And we are becoming new creatures because of the Word. That's a born-again process. All right. So here, we start off as natural men. Natural men still sin. A spiritual man, however, has matured and overcome his sin. He's the perfect man. He was a natural man. He did have sin. The natural man over here, the, the spiritual man is not claiming that he had no sin or has no sin because you wouldn't need Jesus. This spiritual man is able to bridle his whole tongue now and overcome that fiery, impulsive thing. This natural man right here. So we're called to come away from being natural into the spiritual and we're being blocked. It's being blocked because of teachings. It's being blocked by a teaching that I can't ever overcome my sin, which is not what Jesus says. 
Okay? If we're going to teach the Word, the Word of God, the Word of God doesn't say that. And you know, the people, people that believe they can't overcome their sins are not keeping the Word of God. They're keeping the Word of man. That's the problem. So, if we keep the Word of God, we become spiritual men. Something's blocking it, though. And that's the word of men. The word of men. Let's go back to the scriptures and see what he's saying here. He's talking about, But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish. Now, it is quite foolish to a vast array and many, many people, a vast amount of many peoples in the churches. It's a foolish thing to say, You will get mocked at, you will get laughed at, you will get ridiculed, you'll get ostracized. If you tell somebody that you can overcome your sin through Jesus, you're not there yet. Always make sure you make sure you understand not to claim you're perfect. Don't claim you're perfect. That's not what we're doing here. Anybody that does that, according to Job, is a foolish person. Never go around claiming that you're perfect. There are Christians who do that. There are Christians who do that. We're not saying that. We're teaching what Jesus said. Jesus said, go and be perfect. I think we should go and be perfect. Don't ask me if I'm there yet, because I'm just going to tell you no, but I believe it's possible. Faith is about possibility. Faith is about possibility. And many Christians in the natural, the natural man is living by what he sees. This man right here, this natural man right here, but the natural man receives not the things of God because it's foolish. He's not going to believe in, in the possibility or the miracle. Guys, it's a miracle that we can control our tongue. It's a miracle that I don't get offended like I used to. It's a miracle that I would stop lusting, lusting after women. It's a miracle that I would have the power to do that now. To live righteous is, to, is a miracle. It's a miracle of grace. It's a literal, something was put in me that was not there before. Come from God has to, because I can't do it. So the natural man thinks it's foolish to believe these things. But the spiritual man believes. Look what it says. But he that is spiritual judges these matters. Yet he himself is judged by no man because he's actually obedient to God. And what man, what natural man can judge him? He's living righteously. Now, why can't this natural man be judged? There is no judgment to, against him. James says judgment comes against people who are sinning. Let's go. Let's go find it. James. The book of James. And I want to type in condemnation to find the words condemnation in that book and show you, grudge not against one another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Now this kind of con condemnation, I believe, he's talking about here, is condemning your behavior. Can I get an amen? James is saying that you're going to have condemnation come upon you if you act this way. Can I get an amen if you understand there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Look what it says. There is no condemnation to them who walk in the Spirit. But look what it says. Look what it says. But if you walk after the flesh, who walk not after the flesh? But what if you walk after the flesh? What if you walk after the flesh? Well, James says, grudge not against one another, lest you be condemned. So there is condemnation against sin. If you walk in the flesh, you're going to be condemned. And that may be eternally if you don't turn from it. Jesus says, if your right hand sins, cut it off. Why? Because you'll be condemned and thrown into hell if you don't. Matthew 5.30, we just covered that earlier in the video. This is all connected. This is all one message. There's little bits and pieces we get from different ways of getting the same thing. We have to understand it's all about living holy. It's all about following God and doing what he commands through the grace not from your own dead works. You can't do this on your own. You can't even stop grudging somebody right here without. This is a teaching from God. The only reason I don't want to have a grudge against my dad or my daughter or anybody else. You know, I've been having a problem with this guy at work. I go to work and for three days, this guy's, I'm, I, 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 made, I made a mistake. I, 
I finally stood up for myself and I should, you know, and uh, back off me, man. Stop giving me a hard time. And I got upset with him. But, you know, my, we got reprimanded. I got reprimanded with this guy in the manager's office yesterday. I might as well tell you about this. And she's like, what's the problem with you two? And I said, would you like to go first? I, I told him, I said, you go first and you explain. He said, no, you go first. And the first thing I said out of my mouth was, I like this guy. And I don't think he's a bad guy. I think, and I was trying to explain that we're having personality problems and not beat him up and not attack him and not make him look like he's the only one. I know it's me too. I ran my mouth too to defend myself, but it's still not what Jesus said to do. Jesus said, turn the other cheek. And it's hard to turn the other cheek. It's very difficult, especially when somebody keeps slapping it. Because, you know, how many times, Lord, do I let him slap me in the face? And so I'm weak and I need to learn more about this. But the point is, Grudge not one another. I'm still trying to apply that even where I fell. And I didn't want to make it worse. And I know that it's condemnable behavior. And I know I have shame on me because of the way I acted. Why am I talking about all this? Because when you walk in the flesh, you have condemnation and shame. Okay? Now the spiritual man over here, brothers and sisters, are you listening? But the spiritual man... The spiritual man is judged by nobody. Why am I saying all of this about being condemned, about condemnable behavior? Why are we talking about condemnation? Because there is condemnation if you walk in your flesh. And that's what Paul is talking about to these Corinthians. Look what he's saying. But the spiritual man, nobody judges him. Why? He has no condemnation. Why? Because he's not acting that way anymore. Do you see that? Do you understand verse 15? Give me a seven if you understand what Paul is talking about in verse 15 and we'll move on. I want to make sure you guys see that this spiritual man cannot be judged by anybody. Why? Do you understand why he cannot be judged? Does everybody understand why this spiritual man cannot be judged by anybody? Why? Because he's not acting this way anymore. He's not grudging anybody. He's not bringing condemnation upon himself. He's not acting like that anymore. That's the whole point and even more evidence that the teachings to be spiritually perfect are even more valid. This is just more and more understanding about that, about that reality. So we are to become a spiritual man. Let's look at this. We are brought into the kingdom and we begin to enter the kingdom as natural men. This is over here, the natural man. Jesus tells this natural man, if your right hand keeps sinning, natural man, Cut it off. And if you keep my word, we will make you a spiritual man. Can I get an amen if you understand that? To become a spiritual man who is beyond the condemnation of his fleshly activities, he's now walking in spirit. He's not walking in flesh. There is no condemnation against him anymore. It's all been dealt with. But this natural man, Jesus is telling the natural man, hey, if your right hand keeps sinning, who's, who's, the one, who's the one that's going to sin? The natural man, which is the same as the flesh. The natural man, the carnal man, and the flesh are all the same thing. So when I say the natural man, I'm talking about the sinful flesh, not your physical body, which you need to understand is not sinful on its own. It's just a weak vessel. It's, not a, it's able to be used by sin. So let's talk about that for a minute. I want you guys to understand your body is weak, but it's not the sinful part. It's the spirit of sin that we were born in that uses my tongue and uses my hands and uses my members to, to perform sinful deeds. My eye can look and lust, but my eye is not sinful on its own. It's the spirit. And Jesus is talking about plucking out your eye. He doesn't, he's not really teaching you to do that as a beginning thing that you should do, a spiritual man is going to understand what that means. A spiritual man is going to understand Jesus is really talking about that I need to stop that sin. And the plucking out of the eye is also, <clears throat> to me, a, a literal, has an, a literal impact because Jesus is talking about a literal hell with a literal fire that you'll end up going to if you keep sinning. So the whole thing can be very easily interpreted as a literal teaching. Cut off your hand. 
pluck out your eye if it keeps sinning because you're going to end up in a real fiery hell that is literal if you don't. And so the teaching that goes to this man right here is a seed. Let's just look at it like this. So the seed is the word, all right? The seed goes down into the natural man. And if the natural man obeys it, the natural man becomes a spiritual man. All from the seed, all from the word. Okay, Jesus says, cut off, cut off your right hand. If we do that, we keep his word, right? And then the spirit of God comes into me. You guys all see that right there? Give me a seven if you see that. The spirit of God comes into me and I become an, a spiritual man. Okay? The seed is the word. The seed is the word. 